In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word of God for this first Wednesday in Advent, from 1 Corinthians 1, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. Here ends the reading of the inspired, inerrant Word of our God. Amen. A blessed Advent to you as we embark upon our three midweek Advent services, focusing on the epistle readings for the three Sundays. There is a common theme in all three. There is a phrase that connects all three, if you can notice what it is. From the epistle for Advent last Sunday, the first Sunday in Advent, the Bible says this, As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. This coming Sunday, the second Sunday in Advent, 2 Peter 3, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, waiting and hastening the coming of the day of God. We are waiting for new heavens and a new earth. And finally, for the third Sunday in Advent, 1 Thessalonians 5, May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there, did you catch it? The day of the Lord is the phrase, the coming and the revealing, the second coming of Jesus Christ, and how we are to wait for that day. Now we think of Advent as primarily waiting for Christmas. We are getting ready to celebrate his first coming that we will culminate in the Christ Mass, his birth at Bethlehem. We tell the story each year, we put up the decorations, and that is all well and good. So one theme of Advent is getting ready for Christ's coming at Christmas, just like Lent is a preparation for the resurrection of Jesus. But there is another Advent theme, that of repentance. John the Baptist shows up every year in Advent, calling on us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make his paths straight. Repentance over our sins is a second theme of Advent. But there is also a third theme of Advent, the emphasis on being ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus will come again on the last day, the day of the Lord, and we are to be ready for that day. But all of these themes fit together well as comings of Jesus, the first coming to win salvation by his life, death, and resurrection, giving us that salvation now as we wait for his second coming. And now he comes to us in his gospel, the means of grace. He comes in the gospel and sacraments, calling us to repent of our sins, to believe the gospel of forgiveness, and to live holy lives of good works, loving our neighbor and showing mercy. That day, the day of the Lord, will be a day of salvation and judgment. The phrase, day of the Lord, did not pop up in the New Testament, but it actually has a rich history in the Old Testament, used often by the prophets like Joel, where he says, Blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, the day of Yahweh is coming. Or from the book of Amos, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, it is darkness and not light. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? Wait a minute. These passages make the day of the Lord sound like something very dark and gloomy, something to be dreaded and feared, not a great and glorious day to look forward to. And that is true as far as it goes. In the Old Testament, the day of the Lord is a day of judgment, God's wrath coming down on sinful humanity, beginning with God's own people, Israel. The prophets called Israel to repentance, to those who presumed upon God's grace and their status so that they could feel secure. They were to be roused. For Israel, this judgment would come from other nations, historical events, the fall of the north, the fall of the south, the destruction of the temple. This was the historical judgment upon them. But the day of the Lord also pointed to something more long range. These judgments that all occurred were a type, a microcosm of the great judgment to come upon the whole world at the last day. Jesus speaks in this way in his end time discourses in the Gospels. He tells of the destruction of Jerusalem and then moves in the same breath to the final coming. And that day is coming, people of God. Don't kid yourselves. Don't live in denial. Don't get too comfortable and cozy with this world. 
Judgment Day is coming. As surely as the temple was destroyed, the destruction of this world as we know it is coming upon this unbelieving world. Take heed lest you fall. Do not treat as light and casual the coming of Jesus, who comes now, calling you to repentance and faith. What shall we do? How shall we stand if we neglect so great a salvation? We cannot. So heed the voice of God as it comes to you today, for that is the only way that you will be able to stand on the day of the Lord. And you will stand because you stand in Christ. God is calling you. God has prepared you. God gives you all that you need in Jesus Christ. The day of the Lord will not only be a day of fearful judgment. For us who love is appearing, it is a day of salvation, a day of deliverance, when our Lord will deliver us once for all. The salvation won by Christ in his first coming. The forgiveness of sins won by his blood on the cross. This blood-bought redemption will have its outcome, its consummation at the second coming, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, life with Christ and all of his people in glory forever. That is what is coming, and it will be revealed at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a day that we look forward to with eager anticipation. Look forward to that day with confidence knowing that God has saved you by the blood of Christ, knowing that God has given you faith in your Savior, and that the same God is intent on keeping you in that faith firm unto the end. You and I all have shame and guilt. We're full of guilt and all kinds of vice. Your life has been filled with sins of thought, word, and deed by what you've done and by what you have left undone. But you can stand before God as guiltless even now, and you will be ready for that last day because of Jesus who has taken away your sin and your guilt, replaced it with righteousness, innocence, the perfect Son of God, the sinless Lamb of God. This is a free gift that God has given you, and it will turn the day of judgment into a day of salvation for sure. And God will sustain you until that day. He will keep you strong in the faith and in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at work daily in the word and sacraments. God will keep you in this saving faith. God will allow you to be used as his instrument in bringing mercy to the world. For you and I are waiting, waiting for that final day. But as we wait for that day of the Lord, it all rests on his grace. It rests on the faithfulness of God himself. You and I can wait, wait eagerly, because we are confident in God, who is always faithful, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.